What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today as you can see we are going to uh, well I'm going to be attempting to <laughs> upgrade my Spyderco Manix 2 um, with uh, Flytanium Copper Scales. Now in this video you're going to witness someone who is not an expert at this take apart a knife that is notorious for being a pain in the butt and then you're going to watch me uh, install or attempt to install these scales and put it back together smoothly. Uh, just to let you know, um, there will be there will probably be cuts in this video um, uh, to speed some things up or to um, to uh, save you guys from having to watch me stumble over a process that just takes a really long time. So if it's necessary, I will do that. Hopefully by the end of the video, we will have successfully installed these scales. So in any case, let's go ahead and move forward. As far as I can tell with the Manix, I have taken a Manix apart exactly one other time to install a custom backspacer, and it was a mess. Um, I'm going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to take off my wedding ring so I don't scratch the uh, scales here or my ring. Um, but uh, yeah, I took a, I took apart another uh, Manix and it was an absolute mess. Um, rule number one with any disassembly, uh, go ahead and take the pocket clip off first. Now, fortunately, my uh, Spyderco, uh, when I bought this, was shortly after they made the change and, and stop putting um, red Loctite on everything. So all of these screws should come out pretty easily. Um, a, good, uh, a good piece of advice for anybody who has never, and I know most of the people watching this video, you guys have probably taken your knives apart before, but for anybody who hasn't, um, it's always a good idea to have something to keep all of your screws in. Um, this, uh, I would show this toolkit that I'm using, but it's really cheap and it doesn't matter because I just ordered a new toolkit that I'll be showing on the channel. Um, so just know that this is a Torx, uh, set that came from Walmart and it doesn't matter. Um, okay, we've got the pocket clip off and the reason for that is if you need to lay the knife flat, it will actually lay flat. This one doesn't lay perfectly flat because of the, uh, actuator, the, um, ball bearing lock switch or the caged thing. But let's go ahead and pull this screw out first. I probably should edit this so that um, you guys don't have to sit through this part. But some of you guys actually do like to watch every last little bit. Hey, you know what would help is if I actually looked down at the camera and saw what I was recording, which is me in the bottom right hand corner of the screen taking the screw out of this knife. That's probably not super fun to watch. Um, a lot of you are thinking the same thing as me right now. It's, um, what's he going to do about that, um, that barrel? That's an example of a part of the video I will probably cut. Because if I remember correctly, getting this front scale off completely um, is one of the worst parts. So, now I undid this. Yeah, I was going to say, that should not be too difficult to get out of there. You really, It's really important to make sure that um, the Torx head that you're using fits that head exactly right. Because... Spyderco screws can and will strip. Okay, so essentially what's going to happen here with this front scale is I'm going to lift this up and over the switch and I'm going to, it's going to kind of scissor out like this. Now what you're not going to see is me slowly wiggling that back and forth. Let me actually get the blade out here. Um, you're not going to see me slowly wiggling this up and down, back and forth to get it off of this because that's what's going to have to happen in order for me to get this plate on there. And it does sit right on top of the um, liners. It does not replace the liners. So I don't have to get into the meat and potatoes of this knife, I don't think, um, but I do have to get this off. So what we're going to do, hopefully, is we're going to use some movie magic here. <laughs> And I'm going to stop this video and hopefully the very next thing you see is me having successfully removed the scale and not completely, uh, not, a, not a broken Spyderco Manix 2. So uh, here we go. Hey, thought it would be uh, cool to give you guys a little bit of an update for those of you who are trying to take apart your Manix 2 and maybe having some frustrations. So what I'm doing here, and you can see we're actually making progress. I don't want to break the G10 scale. So what I'm doing is literally just slowly rocking it back and forth. 
G10 feels like it's brittle, but it's actually really strong. And there's a lot of flex before a point where something might break. And also G10 generally does not crack. It actually, it, it bows and all the fibers start to like unweave if you're really gonna put that much force on it. But putting, rocking back and forth and putting this type of torque on, it's not gonna break it. You can see there, the lip of that barrel is actually starting to drop underneath the scale. So it is starting to come up and it will come up eventually um, just to have faith and keep working on it just a little bit at a time. Okay, hopefully the very next thing you see is, is me having completely removed that scale. Okay, and we did it. You can see here um, the lip of the pivot barrel, or I'm sorry, the, um, the lanyard barrel, I guess is what it is, uh, is undamaged. Everything looks great. And you can also see here the G10 scale came up. A uh, little bit of fraying there on the top, but not, not a big deal. Uh, the bottom looks okay. The G10 scale is completely intact and uh, is something that I can, um, you know, use down the road if I decide to take the scales back off. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead. Let me look at the other side here and make sure. Yeah, the other side is going to be exactly the same. So the very first thing I'm going to do is install... Should we install the front side or should I take the other side off? I don't think so. I think I want to install the front side first. So got to get that back over everything and press the scale down into that lipped barrel, which is going to be kind of interesting to do. Oh, but it is, it's, it's sliding over. Yeah. Okay. So that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. That fits beautifully and looks really, really nice. Let's, Get a nice close up there so you can see how well that fit in there. Nothing damaged. You can see it sits right on top of the uh, liner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pivot screw back in there. Let me see which one of these is the pivot screw. Yeah, it's gonna be that one. So also, <laughs> case in point, I said uh, to make sure you have something to put your hardware in. It's also a good idea to ha make sure that you've got something that can organize your hardware so you don't do what I just did and stumble around with which, um, which screw actually goes where. So go ahead and just put that guy back on there to make sure it's held down. And we'll go ahead and put these screws back in there as well. I think actually I need to switch out my heads real quick. I know some of you guys, a lot of people are probably rolling their eyes, but some people like to watch this entire process. I'm sure if a, a small portion of you may have actually enjoyed watching me rock back and forth on that scale. By the way, that took me about, if you're wondering how long it took me, um, it took me about five minutes. It just slowly rocking back and forth. Um, it's going to vary, you know, from knife to knife, um, but that's probably about how long you're looking at there. I was worried about that top screw over tightening. It feels like it still wants to go, but I don't want to. I don't want it to just be spinning in the threads. I think it's just pulling. Yeah. Okay. So that one's good. What about this one? Can it go more? Feels like it's pretty much all the way down. So, hey, that worked out really well. Let you guys see if I can get it to focus. There's the screws. Didn't mess up any of the heads. Everything's lining up really, really nice. I'll tell you right now, just with that front scale on, this knife is heavy. That's going to be a downfall for a lot. I don't I don't really care. This is partially for fun and partially just to for me to dress up a knife that has remained the same for, for a long time. But for those of you looking to upgrade this and you're, if you're worried about weight, uh, that's, a, that's a very real thing. Uh, this is going to make this knife very heavy. I will weigh it at the end of the video, just so you guys know, but yeah, it, it absolutely is gonna make this thing a beast. You know, it kinda looks cool with one copper on the front and G10 on the back, and that might actually be beneficial to some people. Um, if I were gonna do that, if you're gonna go half and half, I would put this side on the pocket, well, whichever your pocket, for me, it's gonna be on this side. Put it on the pocket clip side so it slides in and out of your pocket easy and then you can still get the benefit of the G10 gripping on the other side. That's kinda neat, I don't know, some people might not like that. Okay, let's move on and take the other side off. So again, we're gonna go ahead and just, let's do the pivot first. This side of the pivot I have not actually removed yet, so. Let's hope, yeah, easy, easy. Thank you Spyderco for not using red Loctite anymore because my other Manix, that one had red Loctite and that was a mess. I had to do the 
trick where you heat it up with a hairdryer and it took it takes forever uh, it, it really takes a long time to get that to work so I would not recommend doing that you can also use the soldering iron trick but really truthfully red loctite is just awful and it shouldn't it shouldn't be used on a pocket knife in my opinion you know I mean I, I at some point you're always going to need to disassemble it you know so why why is it even there okay uh, again, I'm going to save you guys the pain of having to watch me rock back and forth on that forever. So I will be back as soon as I have this scale off of that uh, lanyard barrel. Okay, and we've got it off. So that one was super easy, way easier than the front one, actually. So let's go ahead and set this guy into place. Push that on there, work that on. You kind of just, that barrel is so tight, you kind of just have to slowly work it on. And yeah, okay, there we go. It'll just snap into place, I guess. And yeah, if for anybody wondering, yes, it does feel nice and tight. No, there's no play. Um, these flitanium scales, I've had them before. I fit one, uh, a pair of them onto a, a PM2. That was, those were actually titanium. And uh, yeah, they fit extremely well. These are made um, perfectly. And at the price they are, I mean, I got these. Am I, I'm not using the right head, am I? It's important to always use the right head. I got these for 50 bucks, I think, from, I don't know if it was eBay or Blade HQ, but you can get brass, you can get copper, you can get titanium. They make them for the Manix 2, they make them for the Paramilitary 2, I think they make them for the Benchmade, um, they definitely make them for the Benchmade Griptilian, but they also make them for the Benchmade proper, they make them for the, uh, is it the Kershaw Skyline? And some other stuff. I'm waiting for them to make uh, make those scales for the Spyderco Shaman. Absolutely. Uh, sign me up for that. I'm also waiting for Flytanium to make uh, some false bolstered titanium scales that have, you know, maybe this portion up here is smooth, but from here down, some texturing. Let me know in the comments section if you like uh, the idea of that. Here's a great example of that. Uh, the Protec Rockeye. This is what I want to see from uh, Flytanium. Give me texturing right there, false bolster on the front, and uh, maybe keep the backside like that. That way you get the backside benefit of being smooth under the pocket clip for easy in and out access to the uh, in, from your pocket, and but you still have that grip, um, that texturing on an otherwise smooth surface. Um, that would be super cool. I would pay more money for that, uh, but maybe I'm alone there. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and put this uh, put these screws back in, and once again, I need to switch heads or switch bits or whatever you want to say. Go ahead and get that one back in there. Um, also, you know, make sure that um, this should go without saying, but make sure that the screws are wanting to go in there. You know, don't force it if it feels like extremely tight because it means like that the scale may not be lined up perfectly. There we go. See, I actually felt it move there. That one was the threads were not wanting to go. If you force it, you can really, really mess up the threads. There we go. See, it's wanting to go in now. Now, had I forced that, it may have put me in a bad spot. It's actually still not wanting to go in all the way. So I want to make sure they're lined up correctly. Maybe I'm going to back off and do this one first. See if we can get that one in there smooth. Yeah. Okay. So that one's wanting to go. Get it all the way down, but don't over tighten it. You know, just give it a little bit of torque. You don't want to strip that head out. Sorry if the uh, camera's going in and out of focus. I kind of have to look at the knife, you know, with my own eyes and not through the camera so I can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. There we go. Whoop. No, nope. still something in there blocking it. So real quick guys, just so you don't have to watch me fight this on camera, I'm going to mess with this off camera for a sec and see if I can get it in there and I'll explain kind of what happened and what I did. Be right back. Okay. I got it all uh, figured out here. Here's what happened. I put the pivot screw in first and it was pulling the entire scale this way. So what was happening is, is this screw did not have enough room to get in around the scale and the threads were running into the inside of the copper scale. So had I forced it, I really would have messed that screw up, but uh, I, uh, I went ahead and just backed everything out and gave it a shot. That's oftentimes what will happen, especially when you're dealing with a solid scale that has no give in any direction. And of course, everything lines up correctly. So the pivot screw is going to go back in nice and easy there. Now what we are going to have to do is make small adjustments until this knife functions exactly right. And it does not want to right now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to back 
the pivot out just a little bit and we're gonna back this side of the pivot out just a little bit so it's not quite so tight in there and make minor, minor adjustments a little bit at a time. Um, the, uh, yeah, let's do this side. They still, the screw head should still be flush. So with these Spyderco knives, it's kind of like you get them in until you feel a little bit of resistance and that's kind of where you want to stop. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that's nice. So this never used to free drop. Now it's free dropping. Golly, do I have blade play? Yeah, I got a little bit of blade play. I knew that that wasn't gonna be perfect. Let's just go a little tiny bit at a time from here. I'd rather not have blade play. Some of you will deal with a little bit of blade play in order to have that type of action. I don't want blade play at all. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. I don't think I'm gonna have that perfect free fall action once we get this all the way into position. It's still, still free falling. We're getting closer. A little bit less, pretty tight there. That one's pretty tight too. It's still free falling. Man. Oh, we're getting close. I will be pumped if I have no, um, you know, if we have free fall action and no uh, blade play, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that lucky. Still free falling. Oh boy, we might, guys, we might have that there. Can I tighten it anymore? Okay, I can't tighten anymore on that side. Boy, real close there. Yeah, so this now will drop, not, not swinging back and forth. You can see there, that will actually drop now and it does not have any blade play. So that's awesome. Not only do the scales look amazing, but it actually improved, the installation actually improved the action of my knife. Um, so these feel awesome. Uh, I love how these look. Um, really, really cool. Um, can't wait to um, uh, you know carry this around and use it and give you guys a report and show you kind of how they hold up. Uh, this is awesome. It added some ridiculous weight to this guy. In fact, I'm gonna pause this, uh, cut it, and go get my scale because I forgot to bring it out here and then show you guys. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the scale, so let's go ahead and move everything out of the way here. And get it back to zero, zero out, okay. Let's go ahead and close her up. Oh! <laughs> 8.15 ounces, ouch! That's gonna turn a lot of people off right away. 8.18 ounces. So, you know, this is just shy of eight and a quarter ounces, uh, over eight ounces, obviously. Um, that is definitely not gonna be okay for a lot of people, but on the flip side of that, if you guys are wanting, wanting to know, do I think it's cool? Oh, yeah, it's super cool. Um, I love, in this case, the contrast between the copper and black. That is really, really nice looking to me. And I generally don't like DLC coated blades, but um, I'm a huge fan of this and uh, I, I love it even more now, you know, so I'm okay with the weight. This is really cool. Um, that's gonna be pretty much it for today, guys. Um, I know that I kind of stumbled through the uh, disassembly and reassembly there, but in any case, I hope you got some level of entertainment out of this. Um, I highly recommend Flytanium scales. They're very easy to install, even on a knife like the Manix 2 that's kind of finicky. Um, but uh, any other model should actually be substantially easier than the Manix 2 in terms of what, uh, what other models they offer their scales for. So Flytanium scales are awesome. Um, go ahead and get yourself some. They're, they're, um, they're inexpensive and they fit perfectly and I think uh, you guys will really, really like them. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so please check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.